don't we? See, you know the old saying, open mouth, insert. Yeah, that happens a lot, doesn't it? That's for sure. Ready? Hands up. Hands down. Hands up. Oh, I almost got you. Hands out. Palms to the heaven. Now, rest your arms. We had something so cool scheduled today until someone cracked open a bottle of coronavirus. How many, how many here, when I first heard it, what it was, I went, someone poisoned the beer? What, what, what did they do? That's it. Because, yeah, it'd be, remember years ago how they poisoned Tylenol? Remember that? And, and so when I first heard it, I thought, man, what? Someone poisoned a Corona beer. Good thing we don't drink. I heard one amen in the whole place. Coronavirus. Couldn't come up with a better name, could they? I, I, uh, let's see, Budweiser. Uh, no, Bush virus. Oh, I'm live. I'm sorry, I'm back again. But what we were going to do was this. We were going to have everybody get up and come into the middle, and we were all going to put our hands in, and we were going to say, one, two, three, we're all in. But then the virus came. So here's how we're going to do it. Hands up. Hands out. Palms heaven. Hands together. On the count of three, we're all in. One, two, three. We're, we're all, all in. in. Well, that's close. Oh, you got it. No, Pastor Dave, we got to do that again because this is like a like a team thing, right? Yeah, if but, you're in a team and you're getting in, it's not. And we're all in. All, all right, guys. That was cool. It's like, yeah, we're all in, right? Oh, can you we know do what? it again? Don't touch Don't me. Touch. Six foot social distancing. <laughs> Social distancing. This is what we're going to do when we do all in now. Um, who's, who's back there? Dave, Get go to number two camera. Oh, we got you. Busted. I'm waiting. Usually when I point and say go to number two, you, you do. <laughs> Get a shot. No number two. We're live. <laughs> You're killing me. Here we go. No number two. I guess no number two. Hands up. Hands out. Palms to heaven. Come on now. Ready? Hands in. One, two, three. We're oh, all in. In. That's much yeah. better. Give yourself a round of applause. Great job. Well, what voice I had, I just lost. He did. Um, so I'm going to be a more kinder, gentler pastor today. Huh? <laughs> the pulpit so the question I ask of you today is simple are you truly all in we lift our hands in praise we extend our hands in serving we strive in the word of God but we are more than just saved we are called to be disciples Amen. That's right. and a disciple is one that gets in the game and that's what we're going to be talking about, striving. Listen to 2 John 1.8. Watch out that you do not lose what you worked so hard for, but that you may be rewarded fully from your Father in heaven. Hold on to that which you have learned. Hold on to that which you have sought out. Hold on to that which you were blessed when you served. And hold on to God's word as we go forward into the future. Now, I had someone tell me on, go back, to, uh, Sedona, go to the very first slide, welcome slide thing. Um, I wanted to explain this. Okay, see, it, it's seek, serve, and strive. Notice the little I, because it doesn't matter what we do when we seek, it doesn't matter what we do when we serve, for he is always greater than I. 
Amen. Amen. And so I did that. On, someone said, why did you, did you not have a capital I on your computer? I had one. I didn't use it. But I want you to understand, seek, serve, strive. We have to be a part of what God is doing. We have to be the action behind the power. He empowers us, and then we go and we do. We're like a team, just like Eli said. Think about it. We recruit people. We assemble. We train them. They learn. They grow. They develop. And think of all the people we have sent out of this church to pastor other churches all over the southwest region. So what we've done is the thing, same thing that teams do. We identify, then we develop, and then we deploy them out into the world. We are a team here at Crossroads Church. Thank you. I got another one. We're slow today, but that's okay. I'm talking slow as well. I want you to notice something that isn't in here, though. Okay? There's no bench warmer. You won't have to worry about riding the bench, not with the kingdom of God, unless you so choose. Right. There's no standing on the sidelines, mm. nor seated, seated in the stands watching. When you are called to be a disciple, you are called to be in the game. You are called to strive. For You're called to strive to strive forward into the future with all that you have, with all that is within you. That is what we are supposed to do. I tell you what, I love sports. I love all kinds of sports, except bowling. But I like sports. I'm just kidding. I want to see how many bowlers. But I'll guarantee you this, you can't roll a strike unless you get up over the ball. Right? Right? And I love track. I love to watch runners. I love to see their stride. I love to see their rhythm. But I guarantee you'll never get a ribbon. You'll never get a first place if you don't get in the starting blocks. It won't happen. You can't hit a home run if you're not at the plate. You can't score a touchdown if you're not on the field for the quarterback to throw you the ball. If you're not on the field, you can't even run a ball. Every sport, every team requires action by each and every participant. Amen. We are the same way. If you don't have a Bible, lift your hands up. Our Bible thumpers would be happy to bring you a Bible. And we're going to take a look at a couple of verses. Eli's sitting there because I told him my voice is running out rapidly. So he's going to have to read some of the big passages. Plus, there's words in here I can't pronounce. No, I'm just, he's just going to read. But we're going to start in Luke chapter 13. So turn to Luke chapter 13. And as you turn there, I want you to join me in verse 24. And I want you to notice these words. Starting in 24, 13, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading. Let me in. Let me in. But all this time, the door was open. Sir, open the door for, for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Now, this is kind of a version off of Matthew chapter 7 also, verses 21 through 23, where people call on the Lord Jesus. They, they can even call him by name. We did this for you. We did that for you. We did these things. I never missed a Sunday morning church. I even watched on YouTube because of coronavirus. I even watched then. I prayed. I Bible study. I go to the men's group. I go to women's group. I never miss a Wednesday and only miss some Thursdays. Isn't that enough? And the answer, 
The bottom line answer is what he says here is the same as he said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. Away from me, I never knew you. Words I hope not one single person here ever hears. So like a team, we all have to be in. We all have to help. We have to assist one another. And we all have to be heading in the same direction. I was watching um, ESPN um, last week, and they do the 10 dumb plays, you know, dumbest plays. And there was this team, they were down by one point, okay? They had the ball at half court. And the guys, and it was like three and a half seconds left. And so the guys, you know, you, they're scrambling, trying to get, see who can get open to make the shot. And, and he throws the ball into the guy, and he's supposed to go that way. But he went that way, and he made the basket. And the team lost by one. He made that basket, and he, he came out like this. And his teammates weren't celebrating with him. You went the wrong way. We were supposed to go that way. And that's what's happened to the church world. We've been going the wrong ways. We've been going in different directions. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And there is no other way to the Father except through me. Hands up. Hands out, palms to the heavens, on the count of three, all in. One, two, three, all in. There we go. Very nice. So now, as I get water, Pastor Eli is going to read Exodus 17, and yes, for the third week in a row. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus 17. I want to encourage you, if you are at home, and tuning in online that you can uh, resource these scriptures uh, through our Bible app. Really encourage you guys to, uh, even if you're here today, um, even live, you come here on site. If you have our Bible app it ha- or our um, church app, it has a Bible application in there. Our app has so much great things to offer to help you um, in your faith journey. Um, so turn with me to Exodus chapter 17. Um, As we read this amazing scripture, as it not only uh, calls us to seek God, uh, not only to serve Him, but today we're looking at what that looks like, that as individuals, corporately, as we strive after what He has for us. Starting in verse 4 of uh, Exodus 17, it says that Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do? Now, let's just be honest, just for a moment, how many of y'all have, have been sitting in even that questioning through these recent times we've been facing? Yeah. Lord, what am I to do? Yep. What a perfect passage. God's timing is always, always right. perfect. Yes? Always. So let's look to this perfect scripture for our church today, for our community, and see what we can learn. Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do? Verse 5, the Lord answered Moses. Walk ahead of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take into your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock of Oreb. Strike the the rock and water will come out of it for my people to drink. So Moses did this inside of the elders of Israel and he called the place Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying is the Lord among us or not what another intriguing question verse 8 the Malachites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim Moses said to Joshua choose some of our men to go out to fight the Amalekites tomorrow I will stand up on the hill with the staff of God in my hand so Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses, read it with me, held up his hands. Let's try it again. As long as Moses held Held up up his his hands, hands, the Israelites were winning. 
But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites began to win. When Moses' hands grew tired, church, take note. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Malachite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered. And what a perfect time for us to remember this story and the power of God that is still at work in our lives today. Amen. Amen. I'd like to have, uh, let's see, Pastor Tammy come up and sit on that chair. Eli, why don't you sit on that one right there? Am I going to have to go to a hand mic? Nope. Pastor Billy. Right here. Pastor Aaron. Right here. And where's Miss Eva at? Where are you at, girl? Come on up here. This is my team. Part of it, but not all of it. And you're slow. Hurry up. <laughs> I want you to listen to some key words from Exodus 17. Okay? Listen to these. Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do? Many times I ask that question when we meet for our staff meetings on Monday. What are we to do? Inevitably, the answers that come out is that we need to go. Look right there in the verse, verse 15. The Lord answered Moses, go. Go out to the people. They're not coming in. They're not coming to see you. So you need to go see them. You need to strive to move forward. You need to take us one step at a time. And it says right there, take with you, take with you, take with you, take with you, and take with you, take with you, others as we go. Amen. And we strive towards a future that is unknown. We also find the Amalekites came. Notice this. Notice this in the passage. They didn't sit back and wait for them to come to them. They came too. They came as well. So here they come and here we come. And there's going to be a middle spot. There's going to be a middle ground where the battle takes place. Right. Between 30th Street and 20th Street, Mossman and Butler. There's going to be a battle that is waging. There is a battle that is coming. And there's a battle that is here. Then look at verse 9. Joshua, Moses said to Joshua, choose some of these people and go out to fight. Yeah. Go out to fight. Go out to fight to win. Go out and fight like your life depended on it. Because when you go out and you fight, when you strive towards the battle, notice that in the Bible we always saw the men and women of God going into the battle. They never waited for the battle to come to them. I have moms and dads that will say, I've been praying for my children for years, and they still don't get it. Grandparents, I've been praying for my grandkids for years and years. I just don't think God hears my prayers. So they begin to quit. They strive no longer to make sure that their grandkids and parents strive no longer to make sure that their kids come to know Jesus. Knowing that, as a truth in our world, I have Aaron 
for our teens. I have Billy for our outreach ministries to go into our world. Eva, I don't know what she's for yet, but I'm sorry. No, I just kidding. Way to go. I just want to see if you're paying attention. Eva for our children. Eli for whatever in the world I tell him to do. And yeah, that's Amen. him. He does, he administrates the school, the daycare, associate pastor here. He helps mentor the staff. He is like he is like a pastor. He probably is more of a pastor than I at this point and stage in my life. But you know what? It's okay. Because I'm not going to be here forever. And someone's going to have to take my place. And so Eli has to strive towards the goal. And these individuals have to strive with him. And you, as individuals in this church, have to strive along with all of them. And Tammy, she's another one. She's our compassionate. She's the only one on the stage that has compassion. Amen. Way to go. Air bomb. Benevolence. Mm. Mm. Hey, she cares about everything. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The janitor stepped on an ant. <laughs> it's okay. It's Tammy okay. prayed. I'm just kidding. But she has a very definite call. She takes so much off me. Amen. Amen. If, if all I did was go visit, 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 which is not a call of a pastor. If all I did was go to a hospital or a shut-in, which is not the call of a pastor, I would have no time to teach, right. no time to prepare, right. no time to preach. I would have no time. These individuals have to follow along and strive with me. And if one of them gets out of rhythm, if one of them doesn't do what they're supposed to do, and we're not striving together, then we're not one. That's right. Come on. And what did Jesus pray? That they would be one as me and the Father are one. Yeah. I pray that every day, but I pray that not only for them, but for you, that you would become one. That you wouldn't run from the fight, but you would face the fights of your life. Fight or flight. Which one do you choose? It also says that Aaron and Moses and her went to the top of the hill. And every time Moses raised his hands, what happened? They won. And every time he got tired. They would lose. They would get beat up, beat down. My staff holds my hands up when they need held up. Right. Our church board holds our hands up when they need held up. Amen. We choose to hold your hands up in times of troubles and struggles. We strive to know, know enough about God's word to do the things that we are called to do. There are people in your life that need you. There are people in your life That's right. that will never let me talk to them, That's right. or Eli, or Tammy, Eva, Billy, or Aaron. They'll never let us in. You know why? Because our first names are pastor. But they'll let you in. They'll let you in to their world. See what he's talking about here in Exodus chapter 17 is us going to the fight. Not letting the fight come to us. Striving towards the future. Rev Rev what does it say in Proverbs? It says, what about if the revelation, you don't have a revelation, then you fail. The people must have a vision. The people must have an idea. Working together for a common cause and a goal. Good. And that's what Exodus 17 is all about. We seek, we serve, and we strive. We seek, we serve, and we're inviting you to join us 
as we strive forward into the future. Amen. That's right. As the band comes back to the stage, as you guys remain seated, are you all in? Yeah, come on. Are you all in? We got to move beyond. We, we, we just have, we have to move beyond words. Our actions will speak much louder than our words. Listen to John chapter 14. And then my voice is about out. I tell you this truth, Jesus speaking. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done will do, will strive to do the same works that I have done and even greater works than that which I have done. Greater works than Jesus. Not my word, it's his word. Because I'm going to be with the Father. And I'm going to look down on the sheep and I'm going to say, I know you, kid. 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 Father, Father, I know they can. And them. And it doesn't matter the age. They, they can too. Look, 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 Dad, look. Can and he prays. He prays that we will get to a place where we will learn. He doesn't need us, but he wants us. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want you to take a moment this morning, and I want you to think about. your role in the kingdom. And as you do, I'm going to read the last part of this. You can ask for anything in my name, and I, the Lord your God, will do it so that the Son can bring glory to me, the Father. Yes. Yes, I say. Ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. That's Jesus' very, very words. As Aaron continues to play, what would you ask him for today? courage to go strength to stand an attitude that the future is going to be much better than the past what are you going to ask him what would you dare ask what would you dare ask him for today you know what I believe this is what I believe. Head bowed, eyes closed. Don't peek. Don't be peeking. I believe that you're here today for a reason. 400 people go to this church. Today we probably have 180, 170, somewhere like that. You're chosen. You were chosen by God to be here today in the midst of this pandemic. You were chosen to be here today to hear these words. He's chosen you. The question is, will you now choose him? Will you strive to know more about him? Will you strive to become more like him? Will you strive with these who sit on the platform to help us capture 
the future. Heavenly Father, as we sing, I pray that your spirit would settle on us. And those things we've always thought about, those things we always thought we could do, but maybe I'm just making it up. I don't, I, Lord, I don't know, Lord. Or maybe, just maybe, the reason I think of those things is because you really, really, really are asking me to do it. To hold up the staff's hands. To hold up the pastor's hands. To hold up the church board's hands. To hold up the hands of those who don't know Jesus. One of my favorite phrases is even the trees point up. May we strive that our lives would point up to Jesus. Bless this time, Father, I pray. And I pray for each and every person here. And Lord, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands or to stand up and come down because the true test of this word will be seen in the days, weeks, months, and years to come. So may you bless this word this day, we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Karen.